Dave Hickok 45. You know one of the main reasons for having a firearm is for self-defense. Let's use it for that. We've got some dangerous customers out here. I see a couple of 12 ounces still surviving there. Ah, there's one. <laughs> ah, there's some on the ground. They think they got away. <laughs> they just thought they got away. Oh, yeah, for self defense. As I was trying to say before I was rudely interrupted by uh, all those, uh, by that target rich environment back there. And it just so happens I have a self-defense firearm here, uh, SD9DE. In fact, it's it's value enhanced, as they say. So yes, we have the SD9VE. Finally, got my hands on one. You've been requesting this for a good while, over and over, actually. And a uh, loyal viewer came through and uh, uh, contacted me. Said, "Hey, I've got one. If you want to try it, you want to use it." So here it is, and uh, <laughs> in all of its glory. Oh, we won't talk too much about its ancestors. You might know they happen to be called Sigmas. Uh, but that's not fair either. A lot of fans of the Sigma. It wasn't the worst thing that ever came along. After all, copy the Glock, right? Couldn't be too bad. <laughs> I think the trigger was one of the biggest complaints about the Sigma. The originals and maybe even the later generations. I don't know everything there is to know. I really didn't follow, I have to be honest with you, the Sigma and the SD9s and all the very, uh, the SW9s and all the variations of this gun up to this. I mean, it has been on my radar, but uh, it just wasn't big on my radar. I know that the, the Sigma went to the, what, the SW9, uh, and then uh, the SWs were, were better, and so had a heavy trigger. And, uh, and then what Smith & Wesson decided to do was take the best of the Sigma, as I understand it, and the SD9 and kind of create another pistol, the next generation, which is this one, uh, at a really good price point, the best price point they possibly could, and the best pistol they possibly could for that, for that uh, price point, of course. And they improved the trigger. Uh, some might not think it's the best trigger still but it is designed to be a self-defense uh, pistol, so it does not have a hair trigger. It has a seven to eight pound trigger. It's really not that bad, uh, I don't think. But now I'm a kind of a person who, as you know, if you've been around, likes triggers that have a little bit of weight to them, uh, even if it's a little heavy. If it's a nice, got a nice clean break, I can live with it, I really can. And uh, so anyway, let's load some magazines here and uh, actually I'm gonna shoot the two I have not fired. Uh, you know, ammo is kind of an issue these days. Uh, we did uh, get a hold of some <laughs> this wonderful Champion Federal. We uh, found some of that, and I have some of the PMC and the 124 grain, which I hate to shoot a lot of that. That uh, that stuff is uh, 124 grain, nine millimeter is harder to find than the 115. Of course, it's all impossible to find right now. Let's shoot a couple of these, see if I can tell any difference. And one of the things I wanted to do was shoot, uh, you know, some different ammo in it. This uh, the two first magazines I fired there in my self-defense uh, situation was uh, against the uh, dangerous two liters and such. The first mag was the Independence Ammo 115 grain from metal jacket and uh, the second magazine was Champion. Okay, just keep your breath what we're firing. We're just gonna be firing mainly three, possibly four different types of ammo here. And uh, it, it seems to, we shot uh, a few rounds of the Champion before the video and it, uh, you know, so far, we haven't had any bobbles or anything. It's famous, notorious for being uh, light. You know, it's generally lightweight, and occasionally getting one that's even lighter, which is what you know gives you trouble if you have a gun that, that likes a little warmer ammo, right? So I've got my my classic all-purpose Glock 30 holster here. It actually fits in that pretty well, uh, and that's a Don Hume. I get those questions. I get a question every day. It's funny. It's my own fault. You know, on a video that's two years old, uh, hey, God, what holster were you wearing in uh, some video? Oh, man, I don't know. I've got to go find the video, sit through it, and figure it out, and then the holster's probably covered up. I don't know. Uh, so I need to do better at that now. Let's put a round in the chamber and put him back in the holster. Okay. 
fits really well in that holster. Now it's not as thick as a uh, Glock 30. We'll talk about that, but it does fit the Glock 30 holster better than the, the 9 or 40 uh, holster. Well, let's just go on on out there at a uh, distance and see if we hit anything. Uh, start with the old gong, I guess. Huh? Mr. Buffalo. You know, I never shoot old Mr. Buffalo. Let's do a... Alright. I want him to feel neglected. Or those other swingers. Hmm. <laughs> Alright. Let's try Mr. Turkey up on the top row. He might actually fall if I hit him. We have another magazine here of uh, PMC 124 grain. <laughs> he died a slow death. Well, let's let's zero in on that chicken. Uh, see, uh, now I may not hit it, but if I can. Uh, come close on every shot, that tells me something about the gun. Alright, we nicked him. You know, it feels, the, the sights are right on. Let's try that pig up there. Try these plates right here. Okay. I think I know where to hold. It's a uh, yeah, not bad, not bad. I have to say. Okay, a couple things about it. Like I say, the uh, Smith was trying to uh, take the best of the Sigma and the SWs, their SD9 rather, and put it into this value enhanced model. And uh, it seemed kind of weird to have that on the gun, I guess. But uh, that's really what it is, because they, as I understand, the, the slide uh, has a less expensive finish, just stainless. You know, the other one, uh, the SD9s, I think, had a, a different type of finish. And a different rear sight that was more adjustable. This one's polymer. And, you know, some people have trouble with polymer sights. I never, they never bother me as long as they work. And, of course, that one is adjustable for windage. And uh, doesn't have any kind of elevation device. And I think the SD9s uh, had a, a, a tritium uh, front sight so this doesn't have that either so did away with a few things like that and uh, and dropped about 80 bucks I think uh, it depends on what you know where you buy it these things in the last six months or eight months of course everything's different now I'm talking to you in February of 2013 uh, planet Earth and uh, uh, things are, are crazy right now but it hadn't been that long ago that you'd see these guns at Academy Sports for $299, okay, <laughs> and then $340 and those kinds of prices. And I'm not sure what, what you're seeing them for now, if you see them anywhere, everything has gotten so crazy. But they're, they're basically under $400, and possibly, if you're really lucky, you'd find one way under $400. Okay, so of course, it breaks down just like a, a Glock. Imagine that, very Glock-like. Uh, so that can't be all bad. If you didn't know better, you'd think it was a stainless uh, replacement barrel, you know, for a Glock and everything. Uh, firing pin, uh, block, safety, and everything, it's uh, very, very similar. So, it has a bigger extractor, external extractor, like as you see there. And, uh, it, I, I don't have any big problems with it, to tell you the truth. I haven't shot it a lot. We're, we're low on 9mm. We've got to be careful and not shoot hundreds of rounds, you know, with everything uh, that we show. But uh, it, it seems to be a, a quality piece, dare I say that. Uh, it, it, I, don't, I don't really have any big problems that I've noticed yet. I've had it broken down. I've cleaned it a couple of times, you know, just taking a couple of shots with it. Again, being kind of low on nine, I've just shot maybe a couple, three mags before the video maximum, I guess. And uh, just to, to kind of get a feel for, you know, where to hold and everything and to get a feel for that trigger, because it's different. It has a little more travel. And uh, it's, they call it the self-defense trigger or something like that. 
and it's, it's got a decent reset. It uh, resets right there. I think there's a reset. You hear it clicking like right there. It's not too bad. They want you, it's, it's, uh, I'll tell you what it's similar to, John and I were talking about it. It's similar to a car in a way, but maybe not as smooth, you know, but where you've got some take up, you know, kind of a double action into a striker fire trigger is what it feels like. I got a revolver, double action revolver, moving back into a striker, you know, so, uh, which I like that on the car. And I, I like this fine. Not a problem, but I'm, again, I like a heavier trigger than bottom. And again, it's uh, let's load up. Uh, we'll shoot a few more rounds. The uh, the ancestors are the Sigma, and uh, again, one of the biggest negatives of the uh, the Sigma was the trigger, and that that has kind of been taken care of. There we go. I've got a I've got to tell you a story while I'm loading these magazines. I told this in a radio show, and I know all of you don't catch those. <laughs> you know, the Sigma does have some uh, negative publicity. Kind of funny. But uh, mainly because I guess it's compared with the Glock. It was kind of a Glock copy, and I know there were lawsuits and all that. Uh, and it's probably it was not as bad as it's made out to be, you know, anything. But uh, still, you know, we always look down our nose, I guess, on the Sigma. And uh, I told this story in the radio show. John was I don't know, first grade, second grade, something like that. He may have been kindergarten. He's always known about firearms. He was downtown at the Capitol. Speaking of the state Capitol, and. Uh, on a tour with his class, and they had one of the Capitol guards, you know, touring him around the, you know, the Capitol, his little first grade class or whatever it was, and uh, and John got talking to the guy, and I think asked him what kind of gun he had and everything, and the guy said he had a Sigma, he carried a Sigma, and John was familiar with SIGs, so it didn't compute. He knew SIGs because I had a had had SIGs and talked about them. He knew guns even then, and uh, but so he came home tells me. Guard's carrying a Sigma, Dad. What's a Sigma? You know. So I told him, "Oh, that's a Glock copy, and you know, cheap Glock copy. Most people don't don't like them. <laughs> they got a horrible trigger and all this kind of thing." You know. And I said, "It's too bad those guys can't choose their own firearm, but they probably don't have a choice. You know, they that's what the state bought for them and all that sort of thing." But it, that was the end of that. Well, come to find out, next day in school, they write uh, whoever it was, Officer Bob. You know how those things go, helping out the little kids. So they all next day in school, they write everybody writes Officer Bob a uh, a thank you note for showing them around the state capitol and the grounds and everything. Of course, what's John write? He tells me that I'm about died. He writes, you know, thank you, Officer Bob, for helping us, and I'm sorry you have to carry a Sigma. <laughs> I know, it's just hilarious. Poor Officer Bob, when he got that from the little first grader or second grader, whichever grade John was in at the time, he uh, he. <laughs> he uh, but anyway, such is life. The Sigma does have a, uh, 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 it's gotten mixed reviews, put it that way. Mixed reviews <laughs> will be nice. But the Smith & Wesson has, has come uh, a long way right here, I'll have to say. And, and uh, again, I missed all these generations. I never did own a Sigma. I wonder why. I had 10 Glock, so I wasn't attracted to it. But uh, never did have the later generations of it. The SW9, whatever, I think it was an SW9 uh, value enhanced, a VE, I think, even like this. And I believe those are discontinued. Some of y'all know a lot more about these, of course, than I do in the, the history of them. Uh, I just wanted to get a hold of one of these and, and see how it shoots and what I think of it. Because a lot of you have been asking me what I think of it. Uh, you see these at, at various stores and for really reasonable prices. And uh, I, I can see why you're curious. Because... Uh, almost half the price of a comparable firearm in a SIG or Glock or something along those lines. Okay, so let's take a few more shots and we'll save our nine for another day maybe. Uh, well, we tried it. The sights seem right on, okay? There's nothing there I would want to adjust, uh, long range or short range. It would just take a little bit to get used to the trigger. Uh, so if you pick up one of these, uh, I, you know, that trigger is not that bad I, for me. I, John doesn't like it as well as I do, but uh, it's really not that bad, I don't think. Uh, well, we got some guys here close we neglected, didn't we? All right. <laughs> they need to be right on. Let's see if I can pick off that uh, drink peeking out the top of the tree there. 
See if I can pick these guys off. This will be tough. Not had any malfunctions with any kind of ammo yet. Okay. He's fine. Good little shooter. Let's see if it'll take that pot out. All right. <laughs> it took it all down. Ah, I thought that bucket needed aerating. Yeah, really. <laughs> okay, we got a couple more here. Yeah, pretty nice. No limp wristing or anything. One thing I was going to try, I'm, I'm really at a loss for uh, hollow points. I've got a few, some gold dots I don't really want to necessarily, I couldn't put my hands on, you through. These are some ancient uh, silver tips, Winchester silver tips. Just to take some of you back a ways. I guess they still load these. I don't know. These are, these are probably 20 years old. I keep, uh, I just, man, you wouldn't believe the odds and end bullets that I have like that. Something, a lot of those are 30 years old, I guess weird thing let's just see if it'll function a hollow point since it's a defensive pistol says right on it holster that baby all right there's a desperado down there shooting at me he was shooting at me As I would expect, where it's designed very, very much like a Glock, it, uh, it's probably going to feed about anything, uh, no problem. And it does uh, does not have a magazine disconnect uh, because, you know, I know, I read the gun. I always read the gun. Caution, as it say, capable of firing with magazine removed. So whenever you buy a gun, be sure you look it over very carefully, learn all the parts, and read it. Read your gun, okay? So... I don't know, what have I not told you? You got a uh, loaded chamber indicator there. You got a little hole, kind of like that. It's a, it's a minimalist uh, kind of approach, and you can look in there. You can see if there's a case in there. That's pretty cool. Oh, and you got these little places here for your finger. Yeah, a little roughed up there. It was maybe not all that bad, you know, because you know that's what that's for. Uh, you know, you can tell. I don't, I don't really need a place to specifically put my finger, but that's where it ought to be, right? Not in on the trigger. Of course, you got your Picatinny rail. And uh, the grip is not, now you don't have a lot of ambidextrous features, of course, you can see by that. Uh, uh, that's one thing you don't get. It's a, it's a value enhanced pistol. The grip is fine, uh, except I would definitely uh, want some uh, sandpaper on it, some pal and grips or something. It looks like it's roughed up. You know, you got your serrations and all that on there, but it's really not, it's pretty smooth actually. I, I, I don't get a really good grip on it, to tell you the truth, uh, from that, so. Uh, I mean, that's fine, but I'm, I'm, you know, I'm used to a little bit more than that. So, uh, the, the serrations on the slide are fine. It's got them on the front, too. And uh, that's kind of the, I guess, all the, the key features of the firearm. I, seems, seems okay to me, to tell you the truth. Uh, I can see why people are buying these things and, uh, and uh, bragging on them some. You know, they're, they're very reasonably priced. Uh, longevity, you know, I don't know if someone's fired one 10,000 times or 20,000 times, they can chime in with uh, with their experience or if you've had trouble with, with one. Now, this was nine, you know, I'm not fired a 40, but uh, seems like a pretty good little pistol, I have to say. Uh, life is good.